Good evening. I am Andrew Hevener, and this is another session of the last church of the law and gospel of the King James Bible. And please don't call me reverend, as it says in Psalms 111.9, only the Lord, his name is reverend. So I'd like to stick to that, the Bible telling us how and what we need to do to be in the favor and mercy and grace of God. You may ask, who, may you ask, created God? Of course, you assume God had a creator. God doesn't need creating. The question assumes God was created. If you were really honest and want to know about seeming supposed errors in the Bible, embark into the truth of this book, the King James Holy Bible, 1611, if you dare to know the truth. The natural sinful man is in opposition to God as many people are today. You are at war with God. Surrender and you will live and have eternal life. God's life is an eternal life. Get a life, an eternal life. God accepts you as you are, but God doesn't leave you as you are. No good father would. Discipline without love is a dictatorship. Discipline with love and accountability is Christianity. Love without discipline is anarchy. This is as bad as it gets for a Christian and as good as it gets for an unbeliever. You are going to hell without Jesus. Sorry to say it, but it's true. If you can't believe Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, then how will you ever believe John 3-16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God is your creator, he's your sustainer, he's your redeemer, and he is your judge on judgment day the fear of the Lord means submission reverence to God yielding to him and his way instead of headstrong stiff-necked rebellion to anything pertaining to the Christian religion and in that light quote-unquote religious join him put your faith in Jesus don't call him a liar Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We are justified by faith and have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.1 2 Chronicles 6.19 For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. 2 Chronicles 6.19 We need the law of God to see the depth of our sin, the depravity and vileness of it. We need to come to the end of ourselves, the end of our rope, the end of our hope, to see the error of our ways and come to terms with sin and be convicted of what we see as right from the view of the old, natural, sinful man doing things our own rebellious, disobedient way instead of God's righteous, pure, holy, spotless way through Jesus Christ. You assume the present will be like the past, but if there were no law of universality, like the sun will rise and set today instead of never setting and never rising, or rising for 15 minutes and setting for 48, a random chance universe would have these, and yet God's universe does not. It says in Genesis 8.22, And while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. This is the true word of God which we see every day in science. And let me just tell you, Christians created science because they were seeking a way to think God's thoughts after him. 
That is what we see in the world today. And that is what God proclaims Genesis 8.22 would be until the end of the earth. End of the world. Matthew 11.28 Go ye therefore and make disciples of all... And go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And teaching them everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. What we need is the fear of the Lord, who is eternal and holds the key of death and hell in his hand. As Revelation says, he has the key of David. Revelation 3, 7. And he openeth, and no man or angel shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. God already knows your sin, but he wants you to admit to them. He wants you to confess. You need to have the fear of the Lord, admit to your sin, confess your sin to Jesus, confess your need for Jesus, and repent, turn, forsake. Go away from sin, run away from sin, forsake sin. And you will receive forgiveness from sin and the righteousness that Christ promises us in the sanctification becoming more like him. God already knows your sin, but he wants you to admit it. Have you ever placed anything above God? Then you are an idolater and it is sin. Sin is wrongdoing and is against God and man. Have you ever made any graven image, or bowed down to them, or worshipped them? That is idolatry too. And it is serious because you rejected the God of eternity for a false God who is only temporary and has no life, but only death. Third, these are the commandments. One, two, three, go on through ten. Third, have you taken God's name in vain? You know if you have, and he will hold no one innocent who takes his name in vain. It is blasphemy, and as Matthew 12.36 says, Every idle word which men shall speak, they shall give an account of in judgment day. It even goes as far as saying this. Do you honor and keep the Sabbath holy unto God? In six days the Lord worked and rested the seventh from all his work which he had made. Even God rested as an example for us. We are made in his image and should do likewise. Sowing yourself instead of worship serving yourself instead of worshiping God is breaking the Sabbath and is sin. Do you honor your father and mother? Not to is to sin, and God promises us if we honor father and mother that our days shall be long upon the earth which the Lord our God gives us. He says in Exodus twenty twelve, chapter twenty, verse twelve. Thou shalt not kill, and Jesus went so far as to say, Anyone who has ever hated another is guilty or of murder, in Matthew 5.21 and 5.22. Thou shalt not kill, and it is why, in Matthew 26.52, Revelation 13.10, and Genesis 9.6, There shall be a reckoning for every man and animal that sheds man's blood. Thou shalt not commit adultery, and Jesus speaks to us in Matthew 5.28, saying, If anyone lust, it is as if he has already committed adultery in his heart. Have you ever stolen, and the value is irrelevant? You have, and you are a thief. Have you ever lied? Then you are a liar, and it is a sin against God, bearing false witness. Thou shalt not covet house, car, boat, wife, video game, bank account, anything else, plain, husband, wife, etc., ox or donkey, or anything which isn't yours. Now you know God's law, the Ten Commandments, admit to all your sin, naming each one, confessing, and with the conviction of God, he will hold you accountable for each one. And if you don't confess, be sure your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, 23. Even if you don't feel convicted, you may have a conscience seared with a hot iron, as 1 Timothy 4, 2 says. Repent before God for your own wrong. Confess your sin and confess your need for Jesus' forgiveness. Repent and put your faith in Him 
and live for him. So as Savior and Lord, he is ruling and reigning in your life. John 3.36 He who believes the Son has the only Son. He who believes the Son, only begotten, Jesus Christ, has eternal life. But he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him or her. And remember also Matthew 10.32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him shall I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Remember to repent is to turn from, forsake, walk away, run away if you have to, from sin. Go to the Bible believing, confessing, repenting, applying church, and pray, and give your tithe. And he will bless you. And also, Genesis 12, 3, he will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. And in Israel shall all families of the earth be blessed. Numbers 23, 10, have full assurance in the heart. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let me last my last end be as let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. It's talking about Jacob and the children of Jacob. As Isaiah 45.11 says, Thus saith the Lord, and the, maker, the God of Israel, and the maker thereof, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and of the work of my hands, command ye me. God says, command him, verse, in... Isaiah 45:11 to the, command him what will happen how we can act how we can react how we can respond what to do in this place of the forsake of Israel God knows and he will let us know he's a God of eternity and he will reveal himself and let us know how we should act and how we should bless Israel so that he can bless us through his promise, through his covenant, through his through his word and his commandments that give us life, his testimonies, his law, his love. Each of us is a sinner. What you do with sin makes the difference. Do you accept it by your own power or reject it and confess and repent, turning from it and forsaking it? By the power of Jesus, he has the power over sin and death and will forgive if and when you confess. What will you do on Judgment Day? Good question. What on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Also a good question. Hebrews 9.27 Is appointed man wants to die and then the judgment? Galatians 6.7 Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for as a man sows, that shall he also reap. James 2.10 He who keeps the whole law and yet offends in one point, he is guilty of all. 1 John 1.8.9 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 3.36 He who believes the Son has eternal life, but he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him, and may I add, or her. Hebrews 10.30 Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Hebrews 10.31 It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Revelation 14.11 The smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Worship the beast or his image, or have the mark of his name. And Revelation 20.14 and 15 and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire, and any one not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Charles Spurgeon said, Have you no wish for others to be saved? Then you are not saved yourself. Be sure of that. Charles Spurgeon. And again, this is the last church of the law and gospel of the King James Holy Bible. Don't call me reverend or father or pastor I am not a priest but I am a servant a co-laborer in the Lord Jesus Christ only as Psalms 111 
9 says, God is reverend. No one else is. No one else is God. Matthew 23, 8 through 11. Also Malachi 2, 7. James 3, 1. Matthew 5, 19. Jeremiah 23, 1. And Matthew 12, 36. We are accountable for every word we speak. And now the doctrine of the church. Number one, we're, I am pro-Israel. And uh, pray always. Pray for the peace of Israel. They shall prosper that love thee. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Psalms 122.1 And pray always, as 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says. I am for the authority of the King James Holy Bible. I have the 1611 version, which I believe is the truest. I am for salvation by public confession of personal sin, once admitted and convicted. Confess your sin. Redemption comes through repentance, forsaking evil, justification, and pursuing good, sanctification, possible by Jesus' completed work on the cross of Calvary. The anointing and fire baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit does anoint people today, and He can work miracles such as raising the dead, healing the sick, and forgiving of sin. Turns a dead man into alive. And I believe the heterosexual, which is one man and one woman relationship, is in marriage, not cohabitation, not. Uh, adultery, not fornication, not lewdness, not lasciviousness, not uh, pedophilia, not uh, lust, not covetousness, not murder, not anger, not stealing, not uh, the, any of these sins. And I believe in creation science, a literal 6,000 year old earth, which the Jews have almost precisely because they say the age of the earth is 5,776 years. Very close to 6,000. Every time we open the Bible, we should listen to what the Holy Spirit says and look for Jesus. Look back and thank God. Look forward and trust God. And look around and serve God. We may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Now I will get into angels, which we covered in Genesis 8. We talked about up to 8. We talked about how the fallen angels came to earth and per perverted, they polluted the genealogy, the genetics of the world, Noah and uh, his family were the only ones who remained righteous and perfect in his generations, perfect in his genes. So God had to destroy the world because in Genesis 3.15 he said, as the seed of the woman I will bring the Savior who will bruise Satan's head which means kill him and Satan will bruise his heel which is less of a fatal in fatal wound inflicted and so wounding of his heel can be healed but the wounding of his head killing him cannot angels in Galatians 1 8 through 9 and Colossians 2 18 I will read those verses to you Galatians 1 8 through 9 but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which ye have heard, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel to you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Now Colossians 2.18 Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up, fleshly in mind.
And First John 2.18, Little children, it is the last time, and ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is, that it is the last time. First John 2.18 After the rapture of the saved by Jesus Christ, a sudden appearance publicly of aliens will be the biggest conspiracy. And if you're hearing this today, then you may have gone through the rapture and are headed for the, the tribulation because you didn't accept God's free gift of salvation through repentance of your own personal and uh, the wages of sin is death. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, put your faith in him and him alone, not science, not technology, not reason, not any other thing, not aliens, if you have faith in Jesus, then he can save you and he will save you when you repent of your sin. You have to confess your sin to Jesus. You have to confess Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. If you do not have him, you do not have life. So, after the rapture, there will be a public promotion of aliens. And are they really aliens? No, they're fallen angels. The Holy Bible says these are not aliens. They are not extraterrestrials because the heaven is there for God's glory, not man's habitation or alien habitation. They don't come from any other planet. They come from heaven. They were cast out and they are fallen angels which rejected God and his ways and took upon them flesh and are now being ruled by the flesh and are enchained to the flesh and the flesh is death. Only through Jesus Christ is there life. Only with the Holy Bible will we achieve a satisfactory answer to the questions of who are they, have they already been to the earth in Noah's day, is the God of the Old Testament the same as the God of the New Testament, and is God, and so is God just in judging, quote, aliens, unquote. Over the last 50 years, UFOs, unidentified flying objects, or in of unidentified lying objects, depends on what you want to think of them, that may be more true, has been in the news with over 3,000 authenticated photographs and 6,000 professional publications. As from Chuck Mister, Stealing the Mind of America. Multiple UFOs have been plotted on radar, radio detection and ranging. Many witnesses corroborate their existence. So are these new creatures? Not according to Stone Age murals, Egyptian hieroglyphs, journals of the Alexander the Great's men, and Christopher Columbus ship log. I believe the Holy Bible is the most ancient, reliable source of knowledge and all truth. And we will refer to it in asserting the truth. The Holy Bible contains fascinating accounts of heavenly beings of intelligent life. But are they sinful or sinless created beings? Could they, could they be merely angels who exist in and out of our realm, although most people wrongly assume that these beings are from other planets? After all, the heavens declare the glory of God, not man or alien habitation psalms 19 1. when you ask is there intelligent life out there i relate intelligence on the part to discerning biblical accounts of spirituality intelligence comes from god and being made in his image as proverbs 1 7 proverbs 21 30 and 31 james 1 5 matthew 7 7 psalms 25 14 Daniel 2.22, Jeremiah 29.13, Psalms 19.7, and Colossians 2.3 say, The knowledge and wisdom and truth are of God. I would equate righteous intelligence to paralleling God's spirituality. With great knowledge and power, however, comes great responsibility. And like man, a third of the Revelation 12, 4 is where we find that. A third of the angels who have fallen, intelligence for them is simply creating a more clever devil. 
What is the truth behind UFOs? Is there life in outer space? The truth, God's truth, is in here. The Holy Bible, King James Version. It's not out there. What is the truth behind UFOs? Is there life in space? The truth, God's truth, is in here. You will see. The Holy Bible says there are three heavens. The first heaven is what we see above us in the sky. Genesis 1, 7 through 8, which we've covered. The second heaven is all we can observe past the atmosphere of our planet into space. The third heaven is the paradise of God seen in 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 3. Through four. The third heaven is ultimately beyond our knowledge, says Ken Hoven, Age of the Earth. Only when God shows us through his word, as in Job, what happens in heaven can we really know. It is where God resides. It is my assumption that the third heaven accounts for 99.5% of the universe, since we know less than one half of the 1% of observed material makeup of the universe. In Isaiah 14, 14 and 15, Satan has said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt not, thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So to recap, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, or whatever you want to call him, is cast into hell with that great fire-breathing dragon, such as Revelation 12 says he is, and is mentioned in Isaiah 14 with Babylon. Babylon was the kingdom against God. It was Babel, the Tower of Babel, which seeked to, to reach God without God reaching man. It sought to do away with God, say, we don't need God. We can go to heaven by ourselves. And that just ain't true. I believe the devil is the god of Babylon, and Babylon represents the Antichrist world known to be built by Nimrod and led by Satan. Babel and Babylon are both used to denote man's great failure, and Babylon is used when those speaking wish not to be thought of as the kingdom of babbling Babel. Ezekiel 28, 12-19 mentions the king of Tyre, but can't mean him in all the inaccurate description. Read it and you will see what I mean. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealeth up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the oinks, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. Thou hast wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. But the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O cher covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All, that they, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Again, notice the king of Tyre does not meet the requirements. Only the devil does. Now the prologue, going back to Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. 
And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, trying to question God, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, the fruit of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God, for doth God know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What is the lie Eve told Satan? If we touch it shall if we touch it we shall die. This may have been Adam's fault of exaggeration, and when Eve touched it and did not die, she thought it was okay to eat. But as guys we can't admit our faults, right? Now Satan recognizing a half truth told his lie. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. This is another half-truth. You shall be believable. So you see, to be believable, a lie must have some truth. As Adolf Hitler said, if you tell a lie long enough and loud enough, people will believe it, and will believe a big lie rather than a small one. Kent Hovind, The Age of the Earth. The truth of the lie Satan told Eve was you will know good and evil. But he didn't say... You will then only choose evil and have no freedom or power over sin to do good. Genesis 6, 5. The lie Satan told was ye shall be as gods, but Satan really wanted to be worshipped by Adam and Eve in obedience even as God was obeyed. However, God, unlike Satan, has every good gift and every perfect gift from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Unlike the devil, the lies of the devil, James 1.17, Satan is the father of all lies, as John 8.44 says. Contrast James 1.17 with John 8.44, you are the father, you are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Just as Satan's deceiving of Adam and Eve, there is a great cosmic deception that is barreling down on planet Earth and does not come from the universe, first and second heaven, but the unreachable, except through Christ, third heaven. Second Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that shall not come for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the devil in the great tribulation, who will rebuild the Jewish temple, However, they won't be worshipping God, they will be worshipping the devil. And that is the ultimate end of the devil and the Jewish temple. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. As much as Satan wants to be God, so do, to, do these fallen angels. The devil wants to be God apart from God, but the part is already taken. The devil will be separated from God in hell just like the fallen angels in Jude 1 6 and 2 Peter 2 4. The fallen angels, by the adulteration, sin of Balaam, and the devil's lies and false witness to Eve, corrupted humanity, resulting in God's worldwide flood in Noah's day. Remember Genesis 6 through 8. Chapters 6 through 8. They, went, they want to control our thoughts, averting them to anything but God control the labor of our hands and our very lives, abortion, the right to life, which would be abolishing abortion. The real goal, if we are not to be politically correct and honest, is to steal, kill, and destroy, as John 10.10 10 says. Such lies are promoted by the tax dollars and evilation, devolution, transhuman, superhuman, man can become God. Remember the lie told by Satan to Eve. 
Everywhere evolution rears its ugly head, people, especially children, drop dead. Just look at school shootings. In fact, James Madison said, Cursed be all learning that runs contrary to the cross of Christ. Schools teach we don't need God to survive. We are good on our own, which is naturalism and humanism. Self-esteem, actualization, and worth are useless without regard to Jesus as God. Friend, the only one good is God, as Mark 10:18 enlightenedly illuminates. And it has become an institutionalized ideology, reality of public schools lying to the murdering of souls, and devolution, the common gore core, sending kids to hell faster than ever by mandatory teaching of evolution. Forget about no child left behind, as George Bush said, and he was right in trying to help children. But the common gore, common core, is all children are left behind in lie school. The public cesspool, everywhere the evolution public school theory rears its ugly head, people, especially children, drop dead. Humanism and naturalism are Satanism. Friends, the only good one is God. But that's not what public education teaches. Anything other than the Holy Bible is a fatality mentality. Just look at school shootings. In my opinion, school can go to hell because that is where they are sending our kids. Mark 9.42, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believes in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, or her neck, and he were cast into the sea. And not to be outdone in the 21st century, evolution has caused unaccountability of 68 million murders by abortion. This ideology isn't new, as I hope you have seen. The movie maker Marvel tries to put a new spin on it and replace God and defy him with movies with witchcraft such as Thor, X-Men, and uh, the Avengers. It insults human intelligence and the Incredible Hulk. That is my personal take on Marvel, which is very accurate. Why expose your children to drugs, sex, and violence unnecessarily? Why go to public school and popular movies? The worldly movies will only send your children to hell faster. Is the God of the Old Testament the God of the New? As Nimrod in Genesis 10, 8-9 said, And Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, and you need to see where it is therefore, it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter. Now what does that mean? I interpret it slayer because he made Babel in the beginning of his kingdom. Genesis 10.10 10. When the premise of we don't need God, we can have peace and righteous glory separate from God as a naturalist and human says. Nimrod even claimed his tower of Babel would ascend to heaven. And what is wrong with that? After all, we have the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, NASA, trying to do the same thing. But without God, they will end no better than Babel. These lies Nimrod spoke, predating him as the devil himself spoke them. <coughs> Remember Eve and the serpent saying basically the same thing. You don't need God. Isaiah 14, 4-24 gives us more insight. It is vital to understand the prophet Isaiah and his prophecy because it is clear and historical context need to be understood. Like Nimrod, Satan said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 14. Going back to verse 4, someone can read it is a good verse that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how hath the oppressor ceased the golden city ceased the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke he that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth the whole earth is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing yea the fir tree rejoice at thee 
and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid low, no feller has come upon us. That feller is cutting down a tree. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It is stirred, stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit uh, also above the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that openeth not the house of the prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, they go down to the stones of the pit, a carcass, as a carcass trodden under foot. Thou shalt be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, slain thy people, and the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for the children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it as a possession for bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it from the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of God, hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. Verse 26 continues. This is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth, that, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath proposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Rejoice, 29, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestinia, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. As the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Ellipsis. What shall one then answer the, the messengers of the nations? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Is the God of the Old Testament the God of the New? Richard Dawkins hates God like the ancient Nimrod. He resembles, he says, the God of the Old Testament is a racist, homophobe, genocidal, etc. Now why Dawkins would include a virtue among the vices just shows he's mixed up. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. At any rate, God must exist for Dawkins to hate him. Maybe it has not occurred to Dawkins that he should read the Old Testament before he lashes out with scurrilous, negative, wild accusations and comments. God spared Nineveh in the book of Jonah when they truly repented. Naaman was cured of leprosy in 2 Kings 5.20. God spared the Hivites in Gibeah in Joshua 9.7 and Joshua 11.19 when they made peace with Israel. Rahab the harlot was saved in Joshua 6.25, conquering Jericho. 
Lot was saved from homosexuality and certain destruction in Genesis 19, 15, and 16. God spared Noah and all of humanity through him in Genesis 6. Before and after God took Enoch and Elijah, before and after the flood, God took Enoch and Elijah to heaven in Genesis 5.24 and 2 Kings 2.11. Among others, things of which this is a short list. In fact, in facts, the God of the Old Testament is the same as the God of the New Testament, allowing mercy on those who truly repent. Hebrews 13.8 says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What Richard Dawkins is showing is his own delusions and Dawkins delusions and hatred of all that is good, which is the mercy of God. Thus, Dawkins is hated, hateful, and ignorant. He is darkened in his intelligence and his knowledge. And in so doing, Dawkins takes upon himself to judge God and sounds like Satan. I will exalt myself and sit in the place of God. God is the judge, not Dawkins. If you really wanted to see genocide and all that is needed is a little history. In the 20th century, Hitler, Mao, and Stalin murdered 61 million human beings in World War II. And you know that wasn't that long ago. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. These men embrace the master, slave, inferior, superior, superhuman, transhuman, Aryan race, natural selection, evilation ideology. However, not to be outdone in the 21st century, we have murdered 65 million as of 2014 by lack of accountability, by abortion, and lack of accountability to God. This vacuum of morals is promoting more murders than in the 20th century of war, in the 21st century of peace. Jeremiah 6.14, They have healed also the hurt of my daughter, slightly. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. The 68 million number is reported in the U.S. alone. As of 2016, in the U.S. alone, of which 99% have nothing to do with rape. Abortion, for the most part, has nothing to do with rape. Is God just in judging this kind of behavior, serving gods such as Dagon, Rimon, Molech, and Beelzebub? Absolutely. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, These end times would be as the days of Noah were. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of his thoughts was of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis six five. But instead of water it is prophesied in second Peter three ten, that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass with away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This verse describes the astronomical heaven passing away, so be sure the aliens, or quote-unquote extraterrestrials, are not from the second heaven. The Titan, Nephilim, Satanic, Hell's Angels deception involves the environment. We cannot save the planet by evolving, no matter what our lying, falsely called space brothers, star gods, or celestial progenitors say. We can't save the planet, only God can. And he has already said in Isaiah 65:17, For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. The beast of Revelation will try to restore the planet, forcing everyone to overtax themselves in futile efforts because of ecological wacky and wacko tree-hugging nuts, which I saw in Honda commercial. It is as time as of the signs. Revelation... The religion of the day will be serving creation rather than the creator. This new age of Aquarius and evolution, evolution, devolution of mankind to a quote-unquote higher consciousness and quote-unquote next step and quote-unquote stage of evolution is a quote-unquote paradigm shift and quote-unquote quantum leap off a bridge to nowhere. And this will be the tyranny by godless fascists, godless fascists forced upon the world. 
It is the same as the old religions of the world in Noah's day in Genesis 6, 1 through 9. And Matthew 24, 37 says the end times will be as the days of Noah. Where are they from? Heavenly beings are described in error as extraterrestrials. However, no intelligent life or any life has been found anywhere by SETA, SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, NASA or others. Most significantly, Earth is the only planet to contain living organisms. As from Acts and Facts, Dr. Jason Lyle. The Holy Bible refers to the deception knowing these are not extraterrestrials in Jude 1, 6 and 7. And the angels which kept not their first estate, in Greek is okateron, meaning house or habitation of the bodies as a dwelling place for the spirit, only mentioned twice in the whole Bible, in Jude 1, 6 and 2 Corinthians 5, 1 and 2. We long for the heavenly treat pre-tribulation, pre-millennial new bodies, Okatiron, the angels left, coming to earth to pervert themselves through sexual intercourse and dying, destroying the eternal body God gave them. But the angels that left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, they are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, as Jude 1, 6 and 7 says. God, in his omniscience, gave us the Holy Bible to read and follow his word and be not deceived. The Holy Bible has a number of accounts documenting angels with, with them even being present with God. Angels are called sons, small s, of God in Job 1 6 now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them in Job 2 1 again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord my guess is that this was kind of like a military inspection the inference of Genesis 6, 1 through 5 is that these sons of God, fooled by the devil, left their angelic positions assigned to them, dereliction of duty, and exchanged their dwellings in heavenly in heaven for one of earth, and intermarried with human wives. Thus they were traitors to God in his way of uh, the angels not being reproducing, the angels were not to sexually pervert themselves with mankind and mankind with the angels. The children born to them were Nephilim, which means fallen ones, Genesis 6-4. These beings could be called the original hell's angels. The next question on the topic would be, what are fallen angels? Genesis verses 1-9 through tells us how angels left the third heaven and made earth their home. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet in his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. And the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and repented God that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now this repented term of the Lord is easily misunderstood. It means God, it grieved God and vexed his spirit, as in Isaiah 63.10, Ephesians 4.30, Hebrews 7.21, and 1 Samuel 15.29. And also, the strength of Israel shall not lie, nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. This is just as Genesis 6.3, where God's spirit strove with man because of the wicked fallen angels trying to adulterate the bloodline of Christ. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created, from the face of the earth, both men and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth 
Remember, God does not need to repent. 1 Samuel 15.29 Me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Those, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations, and walked with God. The passage has told us of the sons of God, fallen angels, not ETs, not extraterrestrials, came to earth and early, nearly destroyed it with their wickedness, coming from God's abode, the third heaven, to earth in rebellion to God's purpose for them. What was and is his purpose? According to the Bible, angels are supposed to be our guardians and messengers of God. Yet, in abduction phenomena, these powerful alien entities take people against their will and paralyze, probe, and inspect them with painful metallic objects. An alien savior is the greatest cosmic deception. And just so we know, evolutionists, evolutionists, devolutionists say cosmos and cosmic misnomer which is anti-locution to avoid the word universe, giving credit to God for his one word, universe creation. Like global warming, remember they, the scientists in the icebreakers that got stuck in the Antarctic ice and had to be rescued, the ice was so thick in 2014, January 2014, they were studying global warming. There are no other climate changes than spring, summer, fall, and winter. If you think there is global warming, you ain't seen nothing yet. Revelation 16.8 says that the angel poured forth his vial upon the sun and it scorched men with fire. That's like a uh, solar prominence coming to earth scorching men with fire. The Titan, Nephilim, Satanic, Hell's Angels deception involves the environment. We cannot save the planet by evolving, no matter what. Our lying, falsely called space brothers, star gods, and celestial progenitors say. We can't save the planet. Only God can. He's already said in Isaiah 65, 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. The beast of Revelation will try to restore the planet, forcing everyone to overtax themselves with wicked wacky and wacko tree hugging nut ideology of sin death and the devil the religion of the day will be serving creation rather than the creator now i would like to read romans romans 1 16 through 32 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2.4 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, and God has showed it unto them. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the Creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave himself up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense, that recompense of their own, their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, 
being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans 1, 16-32 To sum it all up, aliens are like criminals break into your house, your home, raping and murdering your wife and telling you, it's okay, we're from a higher dimension and we're just furthering evolution. How would that make you feel? That's how God feels, or worse. The next generation is the next genetic degradation. Remember, Methuselah lived 969 years. We never have or never will evolve. Evolution is a lie from the pit of hell. We are not getting better, but worse. As Dr. Tompkins of the Institute of Creation Research explains in November of this 2014 Acts and Facts, page 16, a secular author admitted the maximum likelihood time for accelerated growth was 5,115 years. This places the beginning period of the genetic decline close to the Genesis Flood. When the Earth began its repopulation through Noah's family and humans rapidly diversified. Amazingly, this recent explosion of the genome variation mostly associated with genetic entropy degradation not evolution also fits the same pattern of human life expectancy rapidly declining after the flood as recorded in the holy bible king james version lie of the devil and his quote unquote aliens following followers was you shall be as gods and live forever only God, through Jesus, grants eternal life. And that's when we are convicted of sin and confess our need for him and repent. Amen. Do you agree? That is the biblical point of view. ETs and quote-unquote aliens falsely are called and are not extraterrestrials. They are not benevolent, but malicious, evil, and devilish hell's angels. Now let's get into our Bible reading for today. Genesis 9-13 through 13. Genesis 9 starts off with a little introduction. God bless Noah. Blood and murder are forbidden. God's covenant signified by the rainbow. God replenished the world, planted... Noah replenished the world, planted a vineyard, is drunken and mocked by his son, curseth Canaan, blessed Shem, prayed for Japheth, and died. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon all, every fowl of the air and upon all the that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat to you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. At the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you be your and you be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I behold I establish my covenant with you, 
and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the whole of fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Now I remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, and I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And the he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. <coughs> and Ham the father of Canaan saw his naked and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father, and told his brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw their, not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And God enlarged Japheth, and he that dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. And all the years of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Chapter 10. This is the introduction. The generations of Noah, the sons of Japheth, the sons of Ham, Nimrod, the first monarch, the sons of Shem. Chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Media, and John, Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiraz, and the sons of Gomer, Afkenaz, and Ribpath, and Tagamar, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Harsheth, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided by their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sapta, and Ramah, and Saptica, and the sons of Ramah, Seba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Canaan in the land of Shinar in the land of Shinar. But of that land went forth Asher, and builded Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and 
Kayla. And Russian between Nineveh and Kayla, the fame is a great city. The same is a great city. And Mizram begat Ludin and Anamim and Lehabin and Neptan and Puthism and Kalohim Keshuhim out of whom came Futim Futim and Captorim and Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn and Heth and the Jebusite and the Amorite and the Gergesite and the Hivite and the Archite and the Sinite and the Arvadite and the Zamorite and the Hamathite and afterward were the families of Canaanites spread abroad and the brother of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou cometh to Gerar in Gaza thou go, and unto Sodom and Gomorrah and Abna, Zeboim even unto Lathesha. These were the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam and Asher and Arphaxad, Arphadad, Arphad, Arphaxad, and Lud and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz and Hul and Gether and Math, Mash. And Arphaxad begot Selah, and Selah begot Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, and his days was the earth divided, and his son's name was Joktan. And Joktan begot Almodad, and Shelef, and Hazam, Hazamavruth, and Jera, and had Dozam, and Uza, Uzal, and Dikla, and Obel, and Abimel, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, Jarba, all these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling was from Metha, Mesha, as thou goest unto Sefer, unto the east. These were the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues and their lands, after their nations. These were the families of the sons of Noah after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations built in the earth after the flood. Chapter 11 Introduction One language in the world, the building of Babel, the confusion of tongues, the generations of Shem, the generations of Terah, the father of Abraham, Terah goes from Ur to Haram. Haran. And the whole earth was one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they built that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they shall begin to do, and now nothing shall be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence, upon the face of all the earth, that they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. 
These are the generations of Shem, Ham, and these are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begot Arphaxad five hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived after Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begot Selah. And Arphaxad lived after he begot Selah four hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And Selah lived thirty years and begot Eber. And Selah lived after he begot Eber, Eber four hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years and begot Peleg. And Eber lived after he begot Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begot sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years and begot Ru. And Peleg lived after he begot Ru two hundred and nine years and begot sons and daughters. And Ru lived two and thirty years and begot Sarag. And Ru lived after he begot Sarag two hundred and seven years and begot sons and daughters. And Sarag lived thirty years and begot Nahor. And Sarag lived after he begot Nahor two hundred years and he begot sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begot Terah. And Nahor lived after he begot Terah a hundred nineteen and nineteen years and begot sons and daughters. And Terah lived twenty years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haram, Haran. Now there, these are the generations of the son. These are generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram. And Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ilkah, Isia, the father of Ilkah. But Sarai was barren. They. Sarah was barren. They had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot son of Haran his son's son, and Sarah his daughter in law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan and they came unto Haran and dwelt there the days of Terah were two hundred and five years and Terah died in Haran now chapter 12 God called Abram and blessed him with the promise of Christ he departed from Lot from Haran he departed with Lot from Haran he journeyed through Canaan which is promised him in a vision he is driven by a famine into Egypt. Fear maketh him Fear maketh him say his wife to be his sister. Pharaoh having taken her from him by plagues is compelled to restore her. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from the kindred, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless thee, them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12.3 so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their house, their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they went. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, 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 
unto the land of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thee thy seed will I give this land. And there buildeth an altar. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there buildeth thee an altar. There he buildeth an altar. And there buildeth he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Ai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went to the down into Egypt to sovereign there for the famine was grievous in the land and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah his wife behold now I know that thou art fair woman to look upon thou art a fair woman to look upon <coughs> therefore shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass, when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld a woman, and she was very fair. And the princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and entreated, he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this? that thou hast done unto me. Why did thou not tell me thou, that she was thy wife? Why said thou she is my sister, that I might have taken her to me to wife? Now therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Chapter 13 Here's a little introduction before the chapter. This is not not uh, inspired, but it is written in the King James Bible to give us a little information about the introduction of the chapter. Abram and Lot returned out of Egypt. By disagreement they part asunder. Lot goeth to wicked Sodom. God reneweth the promise to Abraham. He removeth to Hebron, and there buildeth an altar. And Abram went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord and Lot also which went with him Abraham had flocks and herds and tents and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together and there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwell in, then in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between thy my herd men and thy herd men, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if Thou depart to the right hand, and I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, 
and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou cometh unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the land of Jordan, and Lot journeyeth east, and they separated themselves from the one from the other. Abram dwelleth in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelleth in the cities of the plain, that pitched his tent toward Sodom. And the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, north, northward, southward, and eastward, and westward. For the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thy seed forever. And I will make thee seed as the dust of the earth, for that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, and the length of it, and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came, and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. That is Genesis 9 through 13. Out of the King James Bible, 1611, in the year of our Lord, translation. I pray, I pray for the direction and of God's will. I pray I would not be angry, and when I am angry, to sin not, and have righteous indignation. I pray to recognize the distinctiveness of King James Bible, the preserved word, and I pray I would know, use, and apply the true word of God, the King James Bible, for prayer when praying for people, pastors, and Israel. I remember when praying for Israel, I pray for world peace, as Genesis 12, 3 says. And Psalms 122.6 says, You will bless them that bless Israel, and prosper them that pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name I pray, and to his glory, amen. God bless. Shalom.